hi uh, welcome to the first session and uh, in this session we shall basically look at um, uh, development studies what it is um, uh, the nature of it uh, how development studies uh, uh, came in uh, uh, to be and then um, uh, we we'll also look at uh, its uh, interdisciplinarity, multidisciplinarity, and cross disciplinarity. Um, uh, so, looking at um, how development studies fits for every uh, program, whether engineering or law or sociology or anthropology or any other so that's uh, what we're going to look at in this session so what is development studies uh, it can be looked at at uh, um, at a at different uh, ways uh, from an academic stance but also from uh, a practice stance and and so on so uh, but generally um, development studies is an academic discipline concerned with uh, uh, processes of international development and therefore looking at for instance international relations or actions between uh, uh, countries um, especially between those that were former colonies and those that uh, had power to colonize uh, it could also for it also focuses on um, uh, the insights or theoretical perspectives and analysis of what happens in in both developed and developing countries but it also looks at um, uh, development issues and problems and especially uh, focusing on processes of change how for instance uh, uh, issues of, of uh, uh, issues and problems such as poverty um, such as gender-based violence such as um, children's rights are uh, such as uh, limited technologies or and development or unemployment all those are development issues or insecurities or conflicts or um, sexual reproductive health or the um, environmental issues um, and and so on all those are development issues so development studies looks at how those uh, issues are happening and uh, the processes or interventions or policies or projects or programs that are put forward uh, to address those problems especially in developing countries so uh, that is how uh, uh, what development studies is about so it's about research interests of power uh, uh, power especially uh, post world war ii because um, after World War II, then uh, the developed countries were looking at how they can help the developing countries or the poorest countries, uh, how they can be helped to, to develop. So, but we are going to look at um, uh, these in details when we get to the theories uh, of development and look at how uh, that uh, the end of World War II influenced uh, development. But also, as we'll see in a moment, uh, also development studies itself uh, evolved after um, World War II. So development studies also motivated by, of course, and development in the least uh, developing countries and therefore uh, much more focus on how these uh, uh, least developed countries uh, can be developed. Uh, it also looks at uh, production of knowledge to guide evidence-based interventions that um, uh, if we are having uh, technological uh, problems or health problems in developing countries, then what can be done to address those uh, uh, challenges. So, uh, development studies looks at research on to, to gather evidence on, on uh, and, and therefore use that evidence to make appropriate decisions on what kind of interventions uh, uh, can be done uh, to fit particular context within uh, this world. Not only um, uh, in African, uh, in in uh, uh, on African continent, not only in Asia or uh, also, but also um, in in Latin America, or that's South America, and 
a, any other uh, country that is uh, developing or it's not that is not developed yet but of course we, we shouldn't also confuse uh, i mean um underestimate the fact that even in developed countries such as uh, uk or us or uh, switzerland or finland and so on we shouldn't underestimate the fact that there are also other there are, uh, they have development issues uh, within their own countries so uh, but of course uh, the bigger picture if we look at development studies uh, on a bigger picture it focuses on more uh, mostly on um, developing countries so um, the evolution and thinking uh, about development so uh, porter and others uh, provide a, a milestone or or a trend on how development uh, thinking has been happening and uh, so this is one book recommended for reading uh, i'll see if you can have uh, if we can access a copy uh, through library or other means and we also have uh, this uh, as I, I, I already uh, told you in uh, our previous uh, introductory part uh, uh, I said that the, the companion to development studies by uh, uh, the C, the C Vandena and uh, uh, Porter will be uh, will be our our main uh, reading material or more think of it like our bible for 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 this uh, course unit so uh, so these are two uh, main books that you can look for uh, to, to get more acquainted with how development has evolved but of course for for um, uh, the companion uh, to development studies if you to to have a more glimpse at um, evolution of development thinking and the nature of development please uh, visit uh, part 1 1.3 uh, pages 48 to, 40, to 54 uh, you'll find there a subtopic on the nature of uh, development studies by uh, Porter it's very important so I already shared it I think uh, somehow you could uh, engage it and, and see how you can follow uh, uh, the, the, the discussion in that segment so so here is the uh, the the evolution of uh, development thoughts and uh, development uh, studies so in 1940s of course we had uh, world war ii and it ended in 1945 uh, so after 1945, uh, uh, we have that's when we had the roots of development practice, and uh, in that case, the rich nations um, were taking responsibility to help develop the poor nations. Uh, for instance, the U.S., which was not actually impacted much more in, uh, directly impacted uh, by World War II because their war was uh, fought in um, the Pacific with Japan and then also they aided um, uh, European countries to defeat uh, German, uh, the Nazis. Um, and therefore, it wasn't, it did not suffer a lot, especially, uh, uh, but only most of course uh, financially. So uh, President Roosevelt by then, uh, then uh, commissioned the Marshall Plan that they should now help uh, the European countries that were devastated by the war to get up and then uh, um, develop again, be rich. So that's how development practice started. So around 1950s, then you have a, real, uh, a uh, reliance on classical economic theories of development. Where now we we'll ha we have the modernization modernization theory, therefore looking at development mostly from an economic perspective uh, in terms of numbers or quantifying um, how many goods and, pro, 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 uh, and and services are produced by a particular country and so on. So. And therefore, Western uh, nations uh, were developing and using those economic models to, to do so. Uh, 
um, we are going to look at all these uh, theories um, um, of development and we'll see uh, what theory there is and when it was more uh, uh, what, when it was uh, more used in practice and uh, its relevance in development practice even today uh, before but also even today um, then in 1960s of course there was emergence of radical political perspectives within the mainstream of social sciences of course uh, leading to the rethinking of uh, other development uh, path um, and of course in 1960s that's where you have other theories radical theories that are now we are now opposing the the classical economy economics and therefore uh, an emergence of cross disciplinary development studies um at the institute of, of uh, development studies at the university of uh, uh at the university of, of uh, sussex in 1966 uh, so basically, we can ha we can see the roots of development studies uh, from the Institute of Development Studies um, in the UK um, uh, at the University of Sussex. So um, uh, we could therefore say that <clears throat> that's the foundation of development studies. Um, and then in 1970s, you have emergence of more radical approaches and more subjective and humanistic thinking, uh, trying to now a shift more from just economics but towards um, looking at development thinking and practice in terms of putting the human face uh, forward uh, and therefore the introduction of now development studies uh, at the University of East Anglia in 1973 and therefore now you can see that development studies as a discipline or field of study is now uh, uh, getting uh, more recognized in other institutions uh, not just at the institute of development studies and therefore now moving uh, from within uh, from one institute or from one university and being adopted by uh, other universities at, and other academic institutes uh, uh, as a a, a potential uh, social science discipline and then in 1980s, you have the rise of neoliberal agenda, where now um, the economists and uh, politicians, especially Margaret Thatcher, uh, the then uh, leader in the UK, but also the, the uh, Reagan in in in. Um, in the US pushing for private markets and therefore pushing for uh, limited regulation by by uh, by government that free market uh, is best for eco for economic development and therefore in that case uh, there was consolidation of development studies as a subject um, though with of course commons with geography uh, or development geography uh, and then in 1990s you have images of postmodernism where you have anti post or beyond uh, area development agendas and then the rise of doubts and uncertainties about what development studies is or uh, and social sciences or whether it is a social science or whether it is it cuts across uh, other disciplines and and so on but then in, in in the 2000s then you have now uh, more emerging and and pressing development realities and challenges and therefore leading to more um more positive um um leading to more um, uh, positive perceptions and of course views about development studies and therefore providing a case for more development thinking and studies and, and therefore after the 2000s now so you have now the meridian development course being developed and therefore catering for many development development issues and looking at how act, different actors can address those uh, development issues and problems especially in developing countries and then you have um uh now we are now uh, uh practicing 
uh, towards achieving the sustainable development goals that were now recently uh, uh, dropped as an, a 2030 agenda by the UN uh, and, and so on. So uh, while some are skeptical about development studies as a discipline, uh, we are moving uh, towards uh, towards the age where development studies would be more needed in that case to cater for ideas and knowledge uh, regarding uh, the different problems and how to address them and therefore making it uh, a little bit yeah relevant for any kind of discipline uh, and, and of course that's where now the question of okay uh, if i'm doing arts or if i'm doing uh, um, uh, sciences or biology or physical uh, sciences then why do I need development studies of course as we shall see in the moment it is very uh, relevant and key for any uh, academic discipline or any um, development practice because it gives a foundation of a different kind of thinking uh, that fits in different uh, uh, kind of, of, of discipline and, and development practice so again so you have in 1950s and 60s uh, the thinking is about development is about projects do projects do, invest in in, in in projects and insert in more money uh, do more goods and services and then you have achieved achieve, yeah, development but then in 1970s you have uh, other uh, scholars saying that no it's not about projects it's about uh, socio-economic structures how things are arranged uh, um, maybe for instance how society is arranged the capitalists and the the, the communists and then you have for instance um, uh, the inequalities the upper class and the working class and the poor so it's about struck economic structures and then you have in 1980s uh, others start doubting and saying that no it's not about projects it's not about economic structures but to achieve development it's about how policy structures are made uh, it's policies guidelines on that would um, uh, influence how things are done in 1990s you have a thought or thinking about saying that, that no it's not just about projects it's not just about uh, structures it's not just about policies it should be about rights and freedoms of each individual um, on how they would like to value and live their own lives in um, by choice not just about uh, just economics or goods and services so and therefore their development begins to take uh, the human face okay in 2000s then it's now more about uh, the institutions, politics, okay, how norms and rules are arranged, organized to make sure that they 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 guide how projects or policies or uh, uh, to make sure that the rights and freedoms are catered for. And now onwards, we are uh, we have the looming confusion about how uh, how about. Uh, the many dropping issues that are happening and then the the relative roles of different actors on who is to do what for instance now we moved from uh, the millennium development goals uh, now we are dealing with uh, now around uh, 17 sustainable development goals even under those 17 each one has sub targets that need to be made uh, to make sure that we drive towards achieving a, a, a sustainable uh, development so so you can see we there is so much to think about but then uh, if we are to do that effectively then development studies become a very uh, relevant um, uh, subject or academic discipline that helps us to bring together the different disciplines and uh, have them um, uh, uh, learn about different problem issues and then uh, using that particular knowledge to apply it in the different disciplines uh, uh, to use it uh, to best achieve uh, development so again uh, 
Daisy and uh, I mean Desai and um, and Porter uh, feature in again on issues or regarding the development of Brazilian studies. I've already talked about this uh, indirectly, uh, but then these guys give uh, a more nuanced or summarized version of how Brazilian studies now, of course. Uh, came to be uh, so again in their version so you have of course uh, development studies dating from uh, 1950s and 60s as an academic subject at universities and institutes in the UK and then uh, of course by British mostly by British economists and social scientists of course deviating from uh, the other classical pure economics um, uh, which is more to do with studying societies and economies uh, quantitatively and therefore um, following that you have the emerging uh, you have emerging universities promising to do things differently and therefore promoting some kind of multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary studies uh, across boundaries and disciplines and therefore development studies in that case come uh, becomes a a unique discipline that would help to pull uh, all those other disciplines together in terms of thinking about development or issues in society and therefore influencing changes in in the thinking and practice so uh, and of course again as i have already said in 1960s therefore the institute of government studies at the university of sussex uh, in 1966 Uh, is established and then followed by other British and European uh, universities and but now we are doing it on a global scale so that is how development studies have come uh, about yeah it's a long long road but it's not yet uh, going to, to 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 get done okay so let's talk about the nature of development studies so again mainly regarded as a social science discipline or some uh, look at it as a humanities or arts uh, subject uh, others consider it as a libro or uh, put, i mean categorize it under their uh, the libro uh, arts or also so it depends on how different universities um uh, recategorize them but what is common is that um it still deals with uh, the it has that nature of of, of pulling together uh, different uh, disciplines uh, uh, knowledge from different disciplines to, to to help in dealing with uh, understanding the society and dealing with the the, the different development problems but of course um work uh, regarded as social sciences but working of different uh development issues involve involves uh, active interworks between of course uh social scientists and many other uh people in different um yeah, all actors in different disciplines including uh economists agriculturalists environmentalists health scientists uh legal practitioners those are the lawyers engineers and so on so it can be taken by any uh, discipline and it is uh, relevant for any discipline so that is why you know, for instance you are taking this as uh, as a, a sub unit for your own uh, program so mohan and wilson in 2005 uh, state that proven studies is driven by real world issues and problems uh, rather than disciplinary perspectives So the fact that we are looking at it from a, a multidisciplinary or different discipline perspective does not mean that uh, it's driven by disciplines. It's driven by the real world issues or development problems that at hand. So this requires uh, that different disciplines find ways to communicate and pool resources. Uh, disciplinary priorities are secondary to in, uh, engagement with the realities of men. women and children living in poor countries and the processes and policies which affect them i already talked about this uh, that development studies about one 
uh, especially it focuses on development issues and problems in developing countries and therefore looks at of course especially the marginalized uh, uh, population such as women children and the poor in general of course men are also poor some of them i mean main we have many men that are uh uh, poor uh, but of course yeah while it looks at uh, putting together the, the the different requirements in and priorities in different disciplines uh, it does not necessarily mean that we are focusing on perspectives of those disciplines but we are trying to get the thinking from different uh, um, disciplines and therefore using uh, some kind of communication and resources from different disciplines and to try uh, and engage in dealing with uh, the development realities in developing countries. So the nature of development studies again. So development studies can be looked at as interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, and transdisciplinary. So that is uh, according Tribe and uh, Samna, two thousand four. And then of course, my uh, uh, Desire and Potter say that wait it shouldn't only be looked at as interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary but it should also be looked at as cross-disciplinary we are going to look at this in a moment so development as as uh, development studies as interdisciplinary uh, looks at the idea that uh, the in, that individuals working sh uh, should work within their own discipline but be uh be knowledgeable and experienced within more than one discipline and therefore that's that that's what development studies is about so you have individuals who are working in their own disciplines uh business economic or economics law um uh, engineering uh health sciences and so on but being knowledgeable and experienced about more than one discipline so a lawyer could be practicing uh, legal uh, issues but should also be able to uh, to have knowledge about uh, technology or ICT and so on. Then development studies as multidisciplinary uh, individuals working within their own discipline but with t working with teams consisting of people each knowledgeable and experienced in their own discipline so in this case different from the first one uh, being multidisciplinary means that if a if uh, a business administrator is to do well in in helping uh, societies create better change if that particular business worker is is to do well then they should work with other other practitioners from different disciplines and therefore working as a team pulling together a pool of knowledge and thinking uh, so that they can work together towards achieving or solving a certain problem transdisciplinary involves integrating various disciplines to have them in totality within development studies discipline so in this case you are pulling all different disciplines to work to have them as one under development studies discipline so in summary interdisciplinary means that you are one individual who is um uh a health worker or doing health sciences but you are also knowledgeable about social work practice you are knowledgeable about human rights we are knowledgeable about legal practices you are knowledgeable about other disciplines former disciplinary means that you are knowledgeable about your own discipline as health science but in your work you should be able to work with a team which is made up of different people of different disciplines so health sciences but working with lawyers uh, anthropologists sociologists um, um, human rights activists and so on 
transdisciplinary means that we are bringing all of them to in total that make up one uh, discipline under development studies okay so that is in summary how it is and here we have our illustration from tribe and and Samna. so as you can see under interdis uh, under uh, interdisciplinary so you have economists working uh, you have economists uh, and sociologists and agricultural science working uh, uh, differently in their own fields knowledge about their own fields or discipline but in under development studies you have multidisciplinary where you have economists sociologists and agriculturists working together working together to achieve also a, to achieve a certain goal also of a certain problem and the transdisciplinary you have a totality of all of them combined but a pool of them working under development studies as a display and that is what we are experiencing for instance in this our class so you you guys are some of you are, are doing arts others are doing uh, uh, physical studies others are doing uh, uh, biological uh, sciences or studies and and that's what that's the reflection of what we are talking about as in terms of of uh, uh, all of you coming together but in totality or generally you're representing uh, all these uh, three aspects now desire and potter say that no rather than interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary or just looking at it as transdisciplinary why not look at it as cross-disciplinary and therefore bringing together various fields of study of poverty and inequalities so from economics to geography history and so on so the cross-disciplinary idea of the and potter is more more closely related to the transdisciplinary aspect that uh tribe and, uh, and tribe and samna are talking about so this is what um the and potter are, are saying that look as we try to study poverty and inequalities of course as the main focus for development studies we shouldn't just look at it as just a discipline as in itself but we should look at it as a combination of different disciplines where they are integrated to pull different knowledge and ideas and research methodologies and so on to to work and focus towards studying poverty and inequality and trying to drop uh, policies and practices and projects and so on and other interventions to solve uh, the problems of poverty and inequalities within uh, developing societies and therefore you have those who are doing urban and regional planning those who are doing geography those who are doing uh, anthropology and history those who are doing uh, soci sociology demography or population studies those doing economics or international relations or politics all of them look at the idea of uh, uh, coming together and therefore uh, working under development studies as a discipline and therefore as we shall see uh, in the following sessions uh, especially in the following session where we are defining, defining development you look at we shall look at uh, development uh, as a multidisciplinary uh, concept multidisciplinary concept having different dimensions including economic e development political development social uh, development and other uh, dimensions and therefore those reflecting these different kinds of disciplines so you have politics then a drive towards political development then you have economics towards economic development and then you have sociology of development towards social development and then you have all these others so this is why now this is what makes development studies a multidisciplinary kind of, of uh, uh, subject and that's why you you find yourselves uh, or doing the same uh, uh, course unit as part of your different uh, disciplines so 
then so in that case one would ask okay then what is the relevance of development studies uh uh in general or to my own uh discipline so generally development studies provides an understanding or positioning of economies or societies in the global economic change so gives insights on institutions for instance how they operate uh, in different societies and how those operations of institutions influence the level of, of development of those particular uh, 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 societies and of course also it offers explanations of uh, a complex nature of development issues that while for instance um a biologist or a health scientist would get into a lab and try to test uh, to solve a particular problem does not necessarily mean that that's the only solution to that particular problem take an example of the current covid pandemic while the scientists or doctors or chemists or physicians would combine efforts to go into the, li the la laboratory to try and figure out the vaccine developing a vaccine itself does not solve the problem of covid 19. that is why you have the other social measures of distancing sanitize and wash hands but those are social behaviors and therefore those require the social disciplines to get into uh, action and therefore that makes it uh, having those different uh, uh, influencing factors makes development um, uh, issues complex and and therefore making the way making it difficult for single single stakeholders or single practitioners solve the problem okay even if the vaccine is there we need people to to do um social distancing and so on but to be able to achieve the social distancing to pass on the message you need social scientists to convince the public about the effects of covid but then you also have you need others to operate in that case so it is uh, a complex world we are living in a complex world with complex problems and solution uh, and, and complex problems and therefore they require uh, to deal with this complexity we need uh, to pull uh, the different um, disciplines to come together uh, in terms of thinking and doing research and on, on how to to, to uh, solve these uh, complex uh, problems Development studies also enables researchers and development actors to understand events in a diversified holistic manner. Diversified holistic manner. Like, for instance, we said area multidisciplinary. Having a team made up of doctors, uh, the, uh, legal practitioners, sociologists, and so, uh, and, and so on, business administrators, and so on, or agriculturalists or environmentalists that is a diversified team but making sure they are driving towards having a holistic solution okay so that's uh, what development studies enables us to do it also uh, delivers inter multi course disciplinary ideas knowledge and practice we are i already talked about that so bama and uh, slehan 2004 give uh, a a more difference between uh, the old way of thinking and the new way of thinking under development studies so if you have time you can just visit that uh, article i have also included it in your reading materials and see page 55 and see that this the the uh, how the table they have put forward uh, of course I, I think they 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 got it from the university of birmingham or, so, or something like that but you can check and see and then um uh, uh how that distinction gives uh the idea how development studies um in a relevant way provides new ways of, of knowledge production the knowledge production that we need to address those complex uh, problems that we have so so um development studies of course uh, involves diverse knowledge representation 
it, uh, there's integration of knowledge production, there's enlargement of theoretical frameworks because we are having theoretical ideas from different disciplines. Then you have flexible and reflexive research practices. Note that those are fixed. Uh, if you go to a physician, they have a fixed way of solving problems. But that is one way of solving simple problems. But we are dealing with uh, complex development problems and therefore we need to be uh, flexible but also rethink about uh, research practices on how to uh, uh, engineer knowledge um, uh, to use that particular knowledge to, to, to solve some problems. And then you have of course uh, partnerships and collaborative um, uh, knowledge production through teams of uh, different disciplines and then dynamic research and problem solving etc etc so get time and visit uh, uh, that uh, particular article of Bama and, and Slehan and see what uh, they use in, to talk about the relevance of development studies so the development studies mission uh, it's an inter multi cross disciplinary uh, subject seeking to understand economic, political, social, cultural, and technological issues, uh, mainly in third world countries, focusing on contributing, contributing knowledge to solve, uh, of course, ever changing development problems. Ever changing in terms of that they are ever changing and ever multiplying, and therefore making them complex. And therefore, development studies tries to help us uh, to figure out how to, 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 to research about them and how to, to deal with them. And then, of course, evaluation of, of changes from contextual, historical, and comparative perspective. So development studies does not only look at a particular issue uh, from, uh, uh, I mean, generalized, uh, a generalized perspective. It looks at it from a context uh, a historical and cooperative perspective. So, for instance, if there is, um, um, uh, for instance, if there is, uh, let's say, in DRC recently, you have uh, uh, a, a volcanic eruption uh, 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 challenge which has resulted in two displacement of people, so IDPs, internally displaced people, and uh, uh, people have lost their lives, others have, have lost their livelihoods, and so on. And um, now, to be able to study the problem of uh, and effects of this uh, volcanic eruption in in uh, in Goma, in 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 uh, uh, DRC, development studies helps us to contextualize the effects and the problem of that eruption. Just contextualizing it to study it from the DRC perspective but it also look, uh, helps to study that particular problem and its effects from a historical perspective what when did when when did the, the eruption begin uh, i mean i mean happened before has it ever happened when it happened what was there how did it happen and so on but it also development studies also looks at 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 but particular development problems from comparative perspectives. Okay, if there is this uh, volcanic eruption in DRC, how has it happened in other volcanic eruptions in other countries? Uh, and what has been the effect and the impact and how have they dealt with the, the, the effects of that volcanic eruption? So that is what development does. It's the mission of what development studies does. Then, of course, um, ever evolving and changing in, in theoretical think, thinking and practice. We already looked at how, for instance, the development thinking and, and development studies have dropped over decades from following World War II and so on. So this is the mission for development studies and this is why it is important that you should engage with it. So, assignment one. Uh, following engagement of the at the uh, at course provided, but also this uh, particular lecture presentation, what is development studies to you? Tip: Please give your own thinking, not the definitions I have provided. Okay, so read the materials and understand them, and then give your own perspective of what development studies is to you. Two: 
how relevant do you find Roman studies as a student of either arts, physical, or biological studies? Tip. Answer question two based on your specific area of study. So if you are in arts, if you are focusing, if you are in arts or wanting to do arts, then discuss the relevance of Roman studies according, from the arts perspective. For those who are doing physical, discuss it from the physical perspective. For those who are doing biological studies, discuss Roman studies relevance uh, from the biological studies perspective. How do you find it relevant for your own specific uh, study discipline? So, for example, you can see uh, this uh, short five-minute YouTube video from the the, the, the University of, of Johannesburg, uh, students trying to, students and, and uh, uh, lecturers giving uh, some idea of what development studies is according to them. Don't use their ideas. Use your own thinking. Okay. So we shall return to these questions towards the end of the semester to see how, uh, whether they have changed, whether, the, whether our thinking has changed or not changed. Okay. So you'll find this assignment embedded in, in Moodle. Okay. So that makes it uh, uh, the end of the presentations. Here are some of the references that you can find. Uh, some of the the the, the articles are, are, are embedded in the in Moodle uh, under reading recommended readings. But you can also do your own research uh, to find out uh, more about what government studies is and the nature of government studies and how it is relevant for. Uh, as a, a study discipline okay so thank you and uh, see you in the next session